Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on mass creation for cryo-electron microscopy using Chimera X. Today I'll be covering three different ways that you can use Chimera X to create a mask and um, each method has uh, some advantages and disadvantages uh, so I'll summarize them here quickly so you can jump to the part that sounds most relevant to you. The first method is uh, volume segmentation, and I think this is the most generally useful method. Um, basically, any mask that you create using the other methods could be created using volume segmentation, but it can require a bit more user input than uh, other methods. The second method is using the volume eraser tool, and this tool doesn't give you very much precision, so it is best used when large swaths of the volume are either going to be deleted or uh, retained, and that uh, not much spatial resolution is required when creating a mask. So things like deleting an entire domain of a protein, or maybe a large flexible region that is not very high resolution. The final method that I'm going to show is the mole map method, and this method can create complex masks relatively easily, but it does require an existing model. So it's best if you are analyzing a protein for which there already is a model or for which you've already built a model. There are a number of jobs which require the creation of masks. Uh, some that are probably the most common are local refinement and particle subtraction, and then uh, some other jobs benefit from uh, user-supplied masks, such as 3D classification, 3D variability analysis, and even sometimes global refinements like homogeneous or non-uniform refinement can benefit from a mask. If you find yourself wanting more information about how to make the best mask that you can uh, after watching this video, you can always check out our guide, which has an extensive tutorial uh, that follows many of the same steps that I cover here uh, in written form. And of course, if you have any more questions after reading the guide, the discussion forum is a great place to ask those. Today, I'll be using this uh, volume from the local refinement tutorial. This is the tri SNRNP uh, map, and this is the result of a non uniform refinement. And for the examples I show today, I'm going to be using uh, one of the most common uh, types of mask uh, that we'll want to make, which is for local refinement, right? So in this example, we have this large complex, and it's um, got a couple flexible regions. So this is the body. There's the head up here. Or excuse me, there's the head over here. This is the arm, and then this is the foot. And um, today, I'm going to make a couple different masks of the foot using these three different techniques that I think uh, are the most common and the most useful ways to make masks. Um, so let's just dig right in. The first step in making a mask, no matter what technique you want to use, is to blur the map out. So uh, the reason is that you know when we contour this uh, map down, we can see that we actually have pretty good resolution in uh, some of these regions, especially the body here. You can see the helical pitch and things like that. But in the um, head over here and the foot down here, that resolution is worse. And actually, especially if we look at the head and the arm, they've completely disappeared at this higher contour level. And if we contour down enough that we can see them, the um, region of the map gets really noisy, and uh, including noise in your mask is uh, going to be pretty deleterious to the quality of the alignment you get. So if we first blur out that map, we'll get rid of a lot of that noise and we'll be able to see what we're doing a lot better, and it just makes it easier to make the mask in general. You don't have to worry about these high resolution features, um, whether or not to include them. So you can use volume tools in CryoSpark to low-pass filter the map. Uh, I generally find it's easier and of sufficient quality to just use a Gaussian blurring filter, which is built right into Chimera X. So we can type volume uh, Gaussian and then give it the ID of the volume, which for us, uh, our initial map is just going to be number one. And then SDEV for standard deviation, and that's basically the width of the Gaussian. So a higher number here will give you a blurrier volume. And uh, I generally like to try two first before moving on to any other number. This will take only a second to run, and we can see that um, we've got a much nicer, smoother um, volume here that doesn't have any of that noise in the head or arm region, and especially the foot looks really nice. So uh, I'm just going to change this color a little bit, and then... Um, one other thing to note is that um, because we're doing a local refinement, we might also want to do particle subtraction. And uh, this can improve the quality of a local refinement depending on the um, particles and uh, how big the domain you're lining is. But in any case, it's good generally. If you're going to do a local refinement, you may as well make a mask for particle subtraction just in case you need it later. And these uh, masks are complementary. Everything that is in your local refinement mask should be excluded from your particle subtraction mask and vice versa. Everything in your particle subtraction mask should be excluded from your local refinement mask. Let's go ahead and get started with the first technique. 
So the first technique we're going to use is um, the one that we generally recommend uh, for um, more complex maps um, and even simpler maps. It is still pretty quick, and I think it reduces the likelihood that you make some kind of error um, during your mask creation. So I'm going to start by making a local refinement mask of the foot, and then I'll show you how to make the complementary um, particle subtraction mask. So this procedure is um, uh, segmentation, and uh, what we're going to do is use a watershed segmentation tool that will break this large volume into um, several smaller subvolumes, and then we can output volumes that only include the subvolumes we want. So to do that, I will jump up here to um, Tools, and then Volume Data, and then Segment Map. And you'll see this will create a nice little segment map pane down here. And oops, I'm just going to um, lock it into the dock up there. And then I want to drop down this shortcuts options uh, tab, just because this contains some buttons that are going to do some useful functions uh, that we'll, we'll make pretty significant use of. And so we want to segment our blurry map. So be sure you choose your Gaussian blurred map. In our case, that's number two here. And then all the defaults are fine uh, uh, for our purposes. So we'll just click segment. And depending on the size of, and um, resolution of your uh, map, this will take uh, different amounts of time. But you can see it wasn't too bad. And so now we have all these uh, kind of colorful uh, subregions that sort of um, cover the entirety of our, our initial map, but they're broken out. And so what we can do now is we can select these subregions and then hide them if we don't want them to be in the mask we're building. And um, first I'm going to turn off this map just so it's not visible below uh, the mask we're making. And then I'm going to start with this sort of tan region that's covering the arm. And to select it, I will control left click. And um, you can see if we zoom in a little bit that this has been um, selected in this kind of green outline. It might be more visible if I select this region. So you can see this green outline is our current selection. And then to add to our selection, we can control shift left click. And that will essentially toggle whether a region is in our selection or not. So if I control shift left click this region, you can see it's been excluded now. Then if we come over here and click hide selected regions, um, they are all hidden. And um, the reason we're hiding them and not deleting them is for two reasons. One, there is no undo. So if you ever hide a region you actually decide you want to keep, you can just click show again and it will come back. But if you were to click delete, you can see there's no sort of undelete button here. So this is a bit of a safer way to construct a mask. We're also only hiding them because then at the end we can reshow them to create our particle subtraction map. One last thing that is useful is if you control, uh, click and drag, you will create a box like you're seeing. And this box will select all the regions that it overlaps. And it will even come around on the back and select ones that are sort of on the other side of the volume of your mask, or uh, excuse me, of your selection box. And so if we click hide now, uh, you can see that we've hidden a really large chunk. So this is a way to get rid of very large domains that you know you don't want any of in your final uh, mask. So um, I hopefully haven't got totally turned around. We can turn back on our volume to make sure we know where we are. Great. And then I'm just going to come through here and uh, quickly select and hide a bunch of these regions. OK, so uh, I'm pretty happy with just having these regions in the um, the local refinement mask, the one that we'll use to align the particles. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to control drag to select all of them. And then I'm going to click group. And what that's going to do is make just a single region. And I'm doing this because it'll make it easier to hide all of these later when we want to make our particle subtraction uh, mask. But for now, I will come up here and click File, and then Save Selected Regions to MRC File. And um, the name for this one doesn't matter very much. I'm just going to call it foot um, mask mrc. And, um, we can see here a problem, which is that uh, the box size for this uh, volume, uh, which if we hide our segmentation will be easier to see, the box size for this volume is just big enough to contain the volume. So it's only 103 by 102 by 99 voxels, whereas our map is 380 cubed voxels. And there's a problem because CrowdSpark won't know where to put the volume we just created since it's in the wrong box size. So it actually won't accept this volume as a mask. But luckily, this is a very easy problem to fix. We just need to resample all the information in this mask that we just created onto the original box. And we can do that with volume resample number four, which is the mask we just created, on grid number one, which is our original map. And so now we see we have this purple volume that has the correct box size, 380 cubed, but it is the correct mask as well. It only has the information for the stuff we selected.
So now we can just type save and then um, I think I called it footmask.mrc and then number five. And this will um, create that file that has the correct box size, but only the stuff we masked out. And so now I'll turn back on my segmentation here. How do we create the complementary map, right, with all the stuff we hid? Well, what we can do is we can show regions all, okay? And so now we have all our regions back and we grouped all these ones we made the mask out of. So now we just control click this big group region and hide that. And now uh, we can see that we only have these regions up here. So again, I'm gonna control click and drag and I'm gonna group just uh, in this case to be sure I got everything. So I wanna see everything get put into a group. We're basically done with the segmentation at this point. So we don't need this group, but it's nice to make check and make sure you got everything. And then I'm gonna follow the same procedure. Save selected regions to MRC file. And I'll call this one everything else. Uh, and I have that from an earlier example. Um, and then again, this is on the wrong box size and it's different from the foot, right? Because the everything else is larger. So we can just do uh, the same process we did last time, a volume resample number six this time on grid number one. And then we wanna save to the same place so we don't get, oops, so we don't get uh, confused when we're uploading the masks later. And so now, um, if we look at our two resampled uh, volumes, we can see that uh, we've got a nice uh, sort of everything else mask up here and a nice blue um, foot mask down here. So that is the first technique, that's segmentation. And so now we can move on to the second technique. This technique is one that people are probably more familiar with. We're gonna use the volume eraser to directly modify the, um, the maps themselves. And uh, since we are directly modifying them, it is, uh, if we wanna make that particle subtraction mask later, we're gonna need to create a copy of this volume um, for later. So we'll start by doing that with volume copy number two, and this is our blurred volume, right? That, that Gaussian blur we applied. And so we can see that number three and number two are exactly the same. Um, and now we're gonna come up here and click right mouse and then erase. And you can see it's created this nice pink sphere for us. And if we right click and drag, we move that sphere around. And um, we're only moving it in the plane of our window, right? So if we move left and right and up and down, it goes there. But if we wanna move it forward and back, we're gonna have to rotate our camera and move it this way. And so um, this tool gives you a couple options that you can see down here. We can either erase everything that's inside the sphere, we can erase everything that's outside the sphere, or we can reduce the map bounds. And we don't ever wanna do this, right? We want our map, um, our, our box size to remain the same. So we don't ever wanna click this, but these two tools are both useful. So when I'm making a mask this way, I like to start by making my sphere very, very large um, to give kind of this flat edge. And then I'll actually put it over the region that I wanna keep, and here's why. You can imagine that if we keep everything inside the sphere here, there's gonna be this nice kind of convex boundary. Oh, this is another problem where since the sphere counts as a model, when you make it very large, your rotation can rotate around a, an unexpected point. And so if we type C of R, which stands for um, uh, center of rotation and then number one or sorry number two has to be something visible um, Now it will always rotate around the center of our box, which is nice uh, when you're using the sphere like this so Like I was saying um, you can imagine if we erase everything outside the sphere here We'll end up with a nice sort of convex boundary between our mask and the uh, rest of the box Whereas if we made the sphere large and put it up here on everything else and erased what was inside the sphere, we would have this sort of concave boundary. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure that that makes a huge difference. I just <laughs> find it more aesthetically pleasing to have this convex boundary. So I'll position the sphere approximately where I think the foot ought to go. And remember that you'll be padding this and, and in some cases dilating it as well. So it doesn't need to be exactly precise. I just try to get it kind of close. And then I'll click erase everything outside sphere. And so we can see that number two has been modified. Uh, and now we only have what was outside the sphere. And so all that's left is to come over here and clean up this little chunk, which uh, maybe we can make our sphere smaller for that purpose. So now we're gonna erase inside the sphere. And then um, one other thing you wanna do is keep a really close eye on uh, these little chunks of dust here, right? This is gonna be a problem because when you make a mask, this will get padded out and you'll end up including a, a large region even though the, um, the speck of dust itself is quite small. So I'm gonna come in here and make sure we erase that. Okay, 
this looks pretty good to me. Um, if I were being really careful, I might want to come in here and erase these little loops, but I have a feeling this will get all padded and, and soft edged to kind of be the same. So this is going to be our mask, right? And uh, now we need to create the complementary mask um, for particle subtraction. And um, I'm actually going to turn off the map eraser tool because we won't need it anymore. We don't need to come through and sort of painstakingly erase everything that we didn't erase the first time. What we can do is we can just subtract this uh, mask from our starting blurred volume. So I'm going to color the blurred volume a slightly different color. So now you can see, you know, this is what we want. We want the pink volume to just be what's up here and the blue volume to just be what's down here. But if we turn off the blue, we can see the pink still has this. So what we need to do is subtract this volume from this volume. So we can do volume, subtract, and then number, um, I believe it's number two, number three. I think you put the volume you want to subtract from first, and then the volume you want to subtract second, oh, which is backwards of that. Uh, great. So now we can see in this tan color, we've got exactly what we were hoping for, right? There's this uh, boundary here, and then if we turn back on our, oops, our blue volume, we can see that it forms this perfect, little complementary component. So this will be our foot mask, and this will be our everything else mask. And you can see here that the box sizes are still correct because the volume eraser directly modified those volumes. So it's still 380 cubed for both of these volumes. And you can save them using the same procedure we did the first time. I won't walk through that again, but uh, you can either use the command line or file save. So that is the volume eraser technique. And I think that technique is generally better if you are making sort of large masks, like in this case. Um, if you're doing something like masking out a smaller domain or, or maybe a more complicated shape, it can be difficult to get it just right with the volume eraser. And so that's why we generally recommend um, using segmentation. But uh, let's move on to the third technique, which is useful in um, other cases. OK, so this technique is. Um, called, uh, or well, I would consider it the mole map technique or molecular map technique. And um, mole map is a Chimera X command that can simulate a map based on the uh, based on an atomic model that you have loaded. So in this case, um, I have our map here, and we'll need it to resample uh, to, to use its box, its grid. And, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. But we're actually not going to, to modify or, or really use this map to generate our mask. We're going to use this model. So this technique obviously only works if you have an atomic model. Maybe you've already solved a structure previously, or maybe you've built a model, but you want to improve resolution in a a particular region so you have a model there but but you can still use it to make a mask and this technique is by far the easiest way to generate a um a a mask uh because you don't it, it, it's one command but um, you need to already have a model so that's that's where some of the challenge comes from so the command is quite simple let's say that we want to use um just this uh let's let's turn this to uh cartoon just so we can see what's happening a little bit better so Let's say that we want to use uh, this chain here, which is chain U. It's this this um, uh, RNA. So if we type mole map, M-O-L-M-A-P, and then chain U, which is slash U, um, and then we have to give it a resolution. And this is where you have to be careful because Chimera X isn't doing any kind of simulation, right? It's not saying, okay, I know this is cryo-EM, and I know the particle or the pixel size is this, and so you can only have this resolution. It'll do whatever you want. If you type a 1 here, it will make you a simulated uh, or not even really simulated, a kind of uh, theoretical one angstrom map that these atoms would produce. And you definitely don't want a one angstrom uh, mask for your um, uh, uh, data set, right? Like if we zoom in on what a one angstrom map looks like, this would be a horrible, horrible mask. And if you actually needed something this detailed, um, you you know you wouldn't you wouldn't be watching this tutorial. Let's just say that. So uh, let's 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 delete this this bad mask that we made. And instead, we'll do something like 16 angstroms. And you can see that that has made a really nice, soft, smooth mask. But it's really well centered on that part of the, um, the model that we selected. And you can include other chains in this as well, right? Maybe we want this little blue bit of protein here, which is chain C. So we can type um, slash C comma U, which is uh, select chains C and U. And then if we run the same command oh, and hide our, our yellow map that we started with, you can see that it has done um, both of those. And the nice thing is you can even use the control, trick, control click drag selection to select a given region of atoms. And then if you just type um, 
cell here, S-E-L for selection, it will just make a mask based on your selection. So here we've we've already generated, you know, we can see where we've got this whole chunk here, but we've already generated a really nice mask of the foot and, and it only took a few seconds, right? So if you already have an atomic model, using mole map is probably going to be the easiest uh, way to do it, but you need to already have that model. Those are what I would consider the three kind of most common techniques to generate the mask base. And um, from here, you're going to want to take these masks into your or these mask bases into your mask creation tool, because as I'm sure you know, it's, it's very important that all masks have a soft edge to them and um, you might want to dilate them and you'll definitely need to threshold them as well, right? All of these techniques are just creating a subset of the map. So in fact, uh, let's open one of the masks we just made. Here's a foot mask, and um, we can see that it's it's you know it uh, as you contour down, parts of it will disappear, and you really don't want that for a mask, right? You want it to be binarized, and you can do that in Chimera X, but I think it's easiest to just use uh, do it as part of the step of your mask creation. So in this case, uh, while we're creating the mask, we might want to just set it to maybe 0.15, and that will turn everything that we can see here into a one, and everything else into a zero, and then we'll add the padding and the the soft edge um, as you desire. Um, so I hope that was a helpful technique or a helpful uh, guide into how to create these mask bases. And there's more information on how to add uh, soft edge and other tools and other jobs you might want to use a mask in um, in our written guide. Uh, so good luck. <laughs>